I know you guys have heard this before, but God just gives you the weirdest thing sometimes. This week's message was no exception. I knew early on in the week what I was supposed to preach on, and then I just couldn't believe the examples and the things that happened this week that just sort of strengthened the message and what was happening. So it's like you get a confirmation that, that that's what God really said when you listen to him. The message tonight is tied to life's about choices. And it's true. Life is about choices. And the way we react to the situations. You know, sometimes we just feel like we're so wrapped up in things that we can't make a decision. My friend John Sines was here several months back and said, we got stuff. We all got stuff that we carry around. And the thing is, what happens is when we get all the stuff cleared away, we get down to a particular spot but we can actually see what the choice is. We've got to make a choice. Sometimes we make good choices and sometimes the choices that we make are less than desirable. We question the choices that we make and say that couldn't I have done better than this? And on a regular basis we're all thrust into some decision making, choice deciding deal. You get up in the morning and you go to get dressed, okay, let's see. I wore this and see, I wore a blue shirt yesterday, so I wore a brown t-shirt today, so they know I changed my t-shirt. I mean we can make a decision. You know, we got choices that, I mean, the things that we make decisions on, it's like, do I have a second cup of coffee, or will I drive the blue car day or the red car? We find ourselves just making these big decisions all day long. It's a never-ending task, just on and on and on. Choice. And here's the part that we miss is we can use our faith to let God help us to make those choices. We can get God in on this decision-making process. And I found an example in the Bible of a fellow that probably makes the most out of the situations that anybody could ever make. You've heard people that can make the worst out of a bad situation? That was Paul. And Paul sitting in prison in his writing to the new church, new believers, in a town called Philippi. And it's in the European continent, so it's not right in the, what we consider the Holy Land. It's up toward, uh, up toward Rome. And He's trying to encourage them. Now, Paul's in prison, and they're not the Hilton that they are today. I mean, the prison that Paul was in was probably hewn out of rock. It's probably never clean. They don't have color TV. They don't have AC. They don't have uh, maid service. They don't have bunks. They slept on the floor. And yet, here's Paul sending a note of joy to the people in Philippi. Now, if you bookmark your Bible from last week, this just has to do one page over. Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 to 9. We were in uh, chapter 2 last Sunday. But starting in verse 4, Paul writes, Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say to you, Rejoice. Let your gentleness be equivalent to all. The Lord's near. Do not be anxious about anything but in everything. 
by prayer and petition with thanksgiving. Present yourselves to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will be your guard, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is loving, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever have you learned or received or heard from me or seen me, put it into practice, and the God of peace will be with you. See all the things there that he said to do, what's, what's lovely and what's admirable and what you say? In other words, put the junk out of your mind and make decisions and make choices based on something good. Here's Paul sitting in prison in this dungy, dingy old prison, and he's sending this note or this letter out about how happy he is. So I'm after looking at the dictionary, and I found out that happy is defined as, a, as characterized by luck or good fortune. Prosperous. That's happy. But then I looked up joy, and by definition, joy is defined as a condition of feeling of high pleasure or delight. So by far, I would say that in Paul's case, he certainly wasn't lucky. He wasn't happy. And he didn't have good fortune because he was in prison. But he made the best out of a bad situation. And I read once, in a book, and I couldn't find where I read it, but it said that happiness depends on happenings, but joy depends on Christ. Makes sense. We put our love in Christ as Paul did. We have joy in our hearts. Did you realize that this whole entire book, which is only just like four chapters, but the whole book of Philippians is written about the joy. Written about the joy. Sixteen times the issue of joy is mentioned in those four chapters. Now, you got to think about this guy named Paul. Paul was somebody that was really a wealthy person. He really wanted for nothing. He had all kinds of money. And then he, he faced extreme poverty. He sold everything that he had and went to basic service and worked for the Lord. He gave up the wealth and he went to extreme poverty. But now here's the thing that I find interesting about Paul is that throughout his life after he was in the ministry, his life fluctuated so much that he reached pretty much every point between extreme poverty and abundant wealth. He floated in that area. And it was extremely joyful. Even in prison, the gloomy darkness of the prison, he shared his joy with others. He taught an important lesson. And that important lesson is, is when we make our choices, people should be seeing our outside expression instead of our inside. If we're, if we're upset, if we hold their upset in and we can show an expression, an outward expression, we're showing them the way that Jesus would be shown. We're making that choice. We can take disasters. I used to tell the guys when they were working, they'd hit the nail and the nail would bend. Man lost and messed up and bent that nail. I said, you know what you did to bend it? Well, I looked at the side of it. I must have hit it on the side instead of the middle. I said, so you didn't mess up. You learned from your experience. Now you've got a choice. You take the nail out, or you learn to put it the rest of the way in. And the guys that get out there and they learn how to hit that nail and drive it on in, and straighten it up, get it on in. But they learn from their experience. It wasn't a disaster. It's only a disaster if you let it be. 
you overcook the cake, you know, add it in the oven too long. You learn from that experience. Change your ways. And everything that we do, it's whether we go around and write because the cake got burned or rejoice in the fact that we know how to do it right next time. I found some examples this way of people that make the decisions and have the outward appearance. Carl, who is what, nearly 89 now? I think it'll be the next one to be 89. Uh, this week. This week. He'll be 89. And what a cut up this guy is. Now here he is, again, he's laying in the hospital. Smiling like he would be if he was right here today. He's just always smiling. You go to the veterans hospital and you see him up there, he's cutting up and picking on the nurses. And you go to the nursing home, he's cutting up and picking on the nurses and getting with them. And he always seems to be happy. And if you ever see Carl with not a happy look, you know Carl is not doing good. But he can cheer everybody else up with a smile he's got. I was at Lowe's this week. This contractor came up and said, Do you know somebody that I can get to do some concrete finish? Well, I gave him a couple of names. Tell him who it was. He said, You know what? He said, For over 20 years, I was severely depressed. He said, sometimes I was so depressed that I was disabled and couldn't even work. And he said, somebody, I think you watched a, maybe a televangelist. But he heard this person say that if you've got a problem, give it to God. Give it to God. Jesus will take the load, he'll take the burden, and you'll be just fine. And he said, I worked with that, tossed that over to my mind. And he said, I made a decision one day, and he said, I said, I'm going to give this guy a try. I'm going to give my life to God. And he said, I just sat down and I prayed. I said, okay, Jesus, I don't know what this is all about. But he said, I was told that you could fix it. And he said, I believe you could do it. And he said, I want to give my life to you. He said the next morning he woke up and he hadn't felt like that for 20-some years. And he said that day that he made that prayer was the last day he had any depression. He said, now things still happen bad. He said, bad things still happen. But he said, I don't get depressed. He said, I can take those bad situations and I can pick a choice. I can choose to be depressed, or I can choose to look at the right side. That was Thursday at Rose. Last night, we went in the front door after hours. Somebody said, oh, we, all I got is not my door, they'll come and I can. Well, the person who was a security person behind the desk seemed annoyed that somebody would be on her door, but she was kind enough to come in. Pick your ID, we can get you a pass there. So she writes a pass up and just really, here comes another group. Very patient, but stern. You know, she's, this is the rules. One desk, one desk. And normally you've got to go into the emergency room. So, we went up to visit Carl and we came back out. And this lady was sitting there and Kristen asked, she says, how do you deal with all of this after hour excuses that you get? And all the demand that people put on you. She just looked at it and says, I got Jesus. She makes a choice she can either be grouchy, grumpy, and be miserable, or she can deal with it as best she can and try to watch. 
but you got Jesus. It's this outside joy. We've got to make a choice so that we can learn outside joy. How can we be like Jesus if we go around the garage? If we make a choice that every situation, and it happens every day. It's every day that we have to make a choice. Now, if we just ask Jesus, should I have that other cup of coffee? He said, no, I think one's enough. He helped us make a decision. But we need to use the faith that we've got. We need God on our side, like Paul did. We can't do it by ourselves. We can choose to be miserable. Things happen every day, just one right after another. You can wake up and think the day's going to be a whole disaster. And you get up with yourself on guard in that direction. Most likely that's what today's going to be, a disaster. I know y'all have heard me say this before, but go to Walmart. Walk through the store and see somebody stand with the longest, saddest face and just tell them, smile. You need to smile. And watch how many smile. One lady over there one day, I went in and I said, there, I said, you need to smile. And she, she was in this to such a deep thought. She said, I was thinking about something that wasn't good, and thank you. Smile. She was getting her mind on a bad situation. Something had happened at home that she was running through her mind. And she said, it's something I don't need to think about. It's done, it's gone. And she said, you're right. I need to smile. I need to look for good things. That's what it is. If we don't understand, we miss that so much. Look at the encouragement that Paul gave the people. You know, he wrote this letter of joy, and, and in verse 4, or verse 6, he says, don't worry about anything, instead pray for everything. Give them to Jesus. 
And I said, God, how about taking my load and carrying it tonight? I need a night's sleep. God's going to be up anyway. Let him have it. We need to just go to bed, go to sleep, and forget about it. Let God take care of it. We need to make choices that reflect God in us. We need to show a joy. It's not happy for anybody to be happy. We need the joy. It's not just enough to hear God's word. It's not just enough to read God's word. We got to put God's word in practice. The question tonight, are you making choices based on God's word? Yes. Father God, we thank you that you're there to help us to make the right choices. Father, we, we thank you that you help us to bail out when we've made the wrong choice. Father, sometimes it's hard to stop and say, well, we need some help. Sometimes we just think we can handle all ourselves. Father, sometimes the choices we make seem like that they're so simple that we rush into them. We need to make choices that are slower. We need to make choices that weigh on you. Father, we need to make choices that reflect God in us. Father God, we thank you for being with us tonight. Father, we pray for the strength that we need this week. Father, to stand up against the evil. And Father, the things that we do this week, Father, we just pray that they'll all be for your honor and glory. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Thank everyone for coming, and I know that we don't necessarily have uh, have ushers for sitting tonight, but we're here. We had a good time. I look forward to seeing everyone next week.